All right, guys, uh, we're going to take the book in order just as it's printed. Uh, we'll skip we'll skip, skip an occasional chapter or portions of chapters, but we will start out on chapter one. And chapter one is a little different than the rest. In chapter two, you actually start the programming, the coding, um, the exercises in coding. Uh, for chapter one, we're just going to talk a little bit about computers. Some of it's important. It kind of helps in the give you a broader perspective of, of the field of programming. So this is introduction uh, to computers and programming. All right, we're going to talk about hardware right now. And th this hardware is just really brief. We're going to talk about it early in chapter one, then it won't be mentioned again. But it, like I said, it is important to have a grasp of the whole field. Um, there's five major parts to a computer, right? There's the CPU, which is central processing unit. This is the brains of the computer. This is what, where all the work is done, all the decisions are made. Um, that's the most important part of the computer. When people talk about buying a computer, um, one of the things they always um, talk about is the CPU, the speed, the size, uh, uh, just its efficiency. So CPU is where all the work's done. Uh, like I said, most people consider it the brains of the computer. Uh, the RAM, that's random access memory, all right? That's easily accessed memory, all right? That's where, that's the like the, the section where the, the CPU gets its material to do its work. I've always considered the RAM, it's like you got a box of 126 crayons, but you take out the six, seven, eight that you use most commonly and leave on the table. That's your RAM. It's the ones that are easily accessed, all right? You can still go get the rest of the box of crayons. You can get crayons out of the rest, but the random access memory is really quick and easy to access. Things come in and out. Um, it's just more efficient from your computer instead of just having one memory section. So random access memory is easily accessed memory. Um, the third part of a computer is the mass storage devices. Okay, devices that store information. Um, that could be oh, your external hard drive. It could be just a regular hard drive. It could be a jump drive. It's just um, the um, it's the information isn't as easily accessed as the RAM, but you can actually your computer can actually go to it to pull up information. So we've got the CPU, the RAM, and the mass storage. Uh, the fourth is input devices. Okay, you need something to actually tell your computer what to do. So that might come from a keyboard, a mouse click, it might be a scanner, but all of these things are input devices. And the fifth and final is output devices. Output devices, you get to see your final product or hear your final product or just see it is your final product. Uh, that might be something like a monitor, a printer or a speaker. So this is like in the most simplest of terms, but you have to remember that there are five major groups of uh, components of hardware. All right, here's, here's actually a pretty decent schematic of how it works. Look at the left-hand side. I've got my mouse over here. You got the keyboard, mic, mouse, sc uh, scanner, webcam. I forgot that earlier. The webcam is actually an input device. That's your input. Okay, you input into the processor. Now here's where the processor does the work. See all this going up and back and forth? The processor will pull stuff out of backing storage. That's the stuff that's not really fast, um, like a hard drive. You can see my, see my cursor down here. Hard drive, floppy disk, USB pin, CD, uh, DVD. These are storage, but they're not real fast. You can see, you can you can take stuff in you can you can put stuff out up above here is the main memory this is the fast memory remember i tell you the ram 
okay? The RAM can go back. ROM is just read-only memory. You can only take stuff out of it. But this is the quick memory up here, the main memory. And that's what the processor, processor feeds from, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you see a little cutout here, this little blue line. This is, um, this is the actual decision making, all right? ALU, arithmetic, arithmetic, logic unit, registers, right? This is where our decisions are made inside the processor. A lot of the code we did, we, we, we're going to be writing actually um, uses this area right here. And this control unit is inside the processor. And to, find, to, to finalize this drawing, it's the, there's the output. Okay, the processor, the output to the monitor, speakers, data, and projector. As far as hardware, this is all we're going to talk about. I just think you probably just need to stop for a second. Uh, there, this is probably good for a quiz question, maybe, uh, and probably this information is good for a, a, a midterm exam question. So it's something you really need to at least have know that there's five five major parts of a computer's hardware and just actually how they fill in this schematic right here. In the grand scheme of things, this stuff, uh, computers haven't been around that long. I mean, uh, some of you've got grandparents uh, that were born back in the 40s. This is the ENIAC. All right, this is the fir world's first programmable computer. It was built in 1945, and as you can read here, it's to, uh, to calculate ballistic tables for the Army. But look at this thing here. This machine was one big CPU. Remember, um, Central Processing Unit. It was eight feet tall, 100 foot long, and weighed 30 tons. I, I, I've never seen this, but probably the cell phone in your pocket is more powerful than what you're looking at here. And this was cutting edge, state of the art, and it was in your grandparent, probably in your grandparents' lifetime. All right, we're starting at the smallest possible thing with a computer. We're starting with the bit. All right, bit and just to give you a heads up, this is a, this is a quiz uh, test kind of question. BIT stands for binary digit. It's the smallest increment of data on the computer. Okay. Each bit can hold two values, zero or one. I always look at it as on and off. Off is a zero, on is a one. When I look at it, I don't see zeros and ones. I see on and off. You all can look at it any way you want, just as long as you understand what that means with a bit. Um, bits are rarely, are rarely, they're so small, you, you hardly ever work on one at a time. Um, the computer class in the spring, 115, probably won't get us there, but there's something that's called bit manipulation that you can do with C++ that you cannot do with another language, where you can actually read one bit at a time and do work with it. I mean, that's really high tech stuff. And it might be one of those things that we might touch on real briefly in 115, because I'd really like for y'all to see it because it's so cool just using that on off bit inside of a program. But for now, all you got to know is the on off zero one. Um, bits are usually uh, assembled in groups of eight. Eight bits equals a byte. All right. Everything after that is bit off. Uh, is bit off. Everything after that is built off of bytes. All the all the words that you hear to describe describe computers and um, their storage. Here's a little chart that kind of um, kind of um, makes that a little simpler. One bit, the smallest capacity. Remember, zero, one, on, off. A byte is eight bits. Okay, a string of eight byte, I mean, eight bits is one byte. A byte's enough storage to hold a character. D, five, W, exclamation mark, um, a dollar sign, ampersand. All of those take up eight bits or one byte. Then these next three things, this is just for your reference. I won't be asking you a question on these. A kilobyte 
is 8,192 bits a megabyte. And you all have worked with megabytes before and seen MB on stuff. That is 8,388,608 bits a gigabyte. And that's pretty much where we've got. Really, when I was your age, mainly everybody dealt with megabytes. Now you guys are dealing, especially with all, everything you all deal with, gigabytes. Gigabytes is 1,024 megabytes, or the big number is um, 8,589,934,592 bits. So you can see just how long um, a gigabyte would be if somebody was going to write it out. Here's what binary conversion uh, looks like using bits and bytes. All right, you see the first uh, cluster of eight, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one. That equates to a capital I. And then um, encoding a space actually has to be coded in. So the next um, byte is zero, one, zero, 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 zero. That's a blank space always going to be a blank space. The A is the next one. The M is the next one. So every space and letter you see across there is a byte. And this is just for storage. This is not programming. This is just your computer storing information. So you can see uh, I am a nerd is one, two, three. It looks like it's, uh, it's 11 bytes long. And how you know that is this is an ASCII 2 conversion table. So um, each number associated is associated with one letter. You can look at number 74 on this and see that it's capital J. But if you look at uh, 106, it's lowercase j. All right, this will do you no good when you're dealing with binary unless you know how to convert it. Um, before I leave this page, though, look across here. This has got all these little wingdings and even greater than, less than. Um, we won't be dealing with any of that for what we're going to deal with. But this 64 to 127 range right here, this range right here, which would be the third and fourth columns, that's the area that we're going to actually be doing some work in. Here's how the here's here's the anatomy of a byte. All right. You look across here, you see 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. All right. This is a byte, and this equates to a letter. The way to look at this is this byte. Um, let's start, let's read from right to left. So the first uh, bit is on. The third bit is on, the fifth, and the seventh bit. On, on, on. You can see how I did this. I've, I've written it as on. So each one of these bits is part of the binary. Um, uh, you could actually think of as binary. The first bit on the far right is 2 to the 0 power. And I think only one or two of you I had for algebra 1, but anything to the 0 power anything to the zero power is one, all right? Two to the first power is two, two to the fourth, second power is four, two to the third power is eight, two to the fourth is 16, two to the fifth power is 32, two to the sixth power is 64, two to the seventh power is 128. I've also got these written over here. The one that throws people is this first one, two to the zero. You have to remember it's two, uh, to anything to the zero is one. So here's how this works. All right. This two to the zero, two to the second, two to the fourth, and two to the sixth are turned on. All right. So when it's turned on, you're going to add that. Two to the zero is one. I'm going to add it two to, to two to the second, which is four. I'm going to add it to two to the fourth, which is 16. And I'm going to add that two to the sixth. Because all of the all all the ones that are yellow are turned on. Look how they correlate with this these these numbers up here. So that means sixty four plus sixteen plus four plus one equals eighty five, 
if we go back to that ASCII conversion table, which I will be handing out to you in class, and it's all over the internet, you, you um, look at that, and that correlates to, oops, let me go back just one second and show. All right, that equals 85. If we go back to the chart here, 85 equals a capital U. Now oh, I'm struggling with this uh, PowerPoint, guys. So this 85 equals a capital U. I've got a couple more examples here. All right, look at this one. This one's a little simpler because it's only got three bits turned on. 0, 01000011. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. All right, three bits turned on. The one on the far right is 2 to the 0, that means 1. The second bit from the right is 2 to the first, which is 2. And then the seventh bit over, which is 2 to the sixth, is 64. 64 plus 2 plus 1. All right, equals 67. We go to 67 on the binary conversion table, and we find out that's a capital C. All right, one more example, and this is in the way. Okay, I've got a lot of ones in this one. 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Six bits are turned on, or six ones. You all look at it however you want to, just as long as you can process this in your mind. All right, that means from right to left, the first, second, third, fifth, sixth, and seventh are turned on, which is two to the zero, plus two to the first, plus two to the second, plus two to the fourth, plus two to the fifth, plus two to the sixth, which is one plus two plus four plus 16, plus 32 plus 64 equals 119. We go over to the chart, 119 equals small w. All right, that's the end of this video. I've got chapter chapter one bit, uh, broken into two sections. Uh, just make sure that you watch this video and ask the question before class on Friday. I would this I would this will be dated for eight o'clock on Friday morning.